it's been a while, it's been two weeks, so uh, it might be a rusty at this again. Okay, so uh, the lecture today is gonna about leukemia. Um, so like any other lectures, uh, we always have uh, you know, warm-up questions. So I'm going to have, uh, Kato, you want to do the warm-up questions? Sure. Okay. Yeah. So let's start. Mm -hmm. with yeah. So the very first question that I want people to understand is what is leukemia? Can anyone tell me exactly what is leukemia? You can use the raise hand functions. All right, so, okay, so uh, I forgot your name. Um, so you have to tell us your name again, okay? Um, that help you. Uh, my name is Hoàng Vũ and I oh, use the yeah. University. I know, I know. So I, I would try to and make a mental note that, you know, you're Hoàng Vũ. So yeah, go ahead, what is leukemia? Yeah, I think leukemia, leukemia is the disorder of uh, proliferation of the white blood cells. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's a fairly, you know, very simple uh, explanation. So let's see, I have all this. So choice is A, B, C, D, E. Uh, so you choose D, right? Okay. Yeah. So what cause of leukemia is unknown, but the risk factors, what are the risk factors of leukemia? First, A, exposure to high amount of radiation, B, exposure to chemicals, um, C, genetic problems such as Down syndrome, and D is all the above. What do you think? All right. Go ahead, you can try it. Yeah, I think um, D are up both. Okay, so uh, tell me, tell me why Down syndrome can cause uh, leukemia. Yeah, uh, when I uh, do a resident in pediatric, I see uh, many patients of Down syndrome have the ALL. Okay, all right. Yeah. yeah, you already know a lot. That's good. All right, so he's right. Uh, you know, radiation and chemicals uh, can change, you know, DNA. So obviously it's a cause for uh, cancer. But C is very interesting because Down syndrome, uh, people have, you know, extra chromosome. Uh, um, and that's why people still doing roost, like do a lot of research to understand why Down syndromes have a high risk of ALL. Uh, some people at Harvard already find like a molecule, but they still in the process of making that connection, but he's right. People notice that um, Down syndrome kids are end up having higher um, um, rate of having AOL and AML. Uh, so that's why they put it at you know, a, a risk for it, um, leukemia also. Okay, so leukemia is considered to be the most common type of cancer in children. Uh, can leukemia be cured in children? Yeah, it's, uh, it is curable. Okay, great. So uh, this is a very important question uh, and I want somebody else to answer that uh, besides have Hong Wu, okay? So what is the difference between lymphoma versus leukemia? All right, I'm gonna pick you, uh, Yong. Yong. Hi. So tell me what well, tell me what is lymphoma and the difference between lymphoma and leukemia. Yeah. Okay. So. So we have leukemia, like Hong Vo said earlier, it's a cancer, the white blood cell, right? So yeah. what exactly is lymphoma? How you define lymphoma? All right, I'm gonna have uh, Chang Wing, uh, Wing Jia. It's since your first time, if you don't know, just say you don't know. But if you do know, then just give us, uh, you know, what do you think? Uh, yeah. I think uh, lymphoma is the cancer of mm -hmm. uh, some cells uh, like uh, T cells and B cells. Okay, 
So what's the difference between T cell and, uh, you know, uh, lymphocyte? So leukemia is a white blood cell, right? So you say T cell, is T cells a white blood cell? Uh, yes, but uh... wait, wait. All right, let, let's go back. Is my question is is lymphocyte is the same as white blood cell? Um, uh, because um, um, they uh, they uh, they have okay. uh, different uh, development uh, mm -hmm. period. Yeah. All right. So let's make it easier. How do you say uh, leukemia in, in Vietnamese? Uh, we call it leukemia. Uh, 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 um, word. So how do you say leukemia in Vietnamese? We just call it leukemia. Uh, really? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. Let me check. Hong Vu. Do you call leukemia is leukemia in Vietnamese too? Yeah, uh, leukemia we call in Vietnamese is uh, leukemia. But um, how about um, lymphoma? Lymphoma, you said lymphoma too. <laughs> okay. All right. So yeah. how? So what? Uh, tell in, me. In, in the past, uh, yeah. when um, our professor learned uh, mm -hmm. uh, French, yeah. they used to leukemia, yeah, mm -hmm. okay. But uh, now they use leukemia. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. So, all right. T oh, since you know a lot, right? Tell me what's the difference between lymphoma versus leukemia. Yeah, I think basically it's uh, it's the same. Uh, it's the disorder of proliferation of the, the white blood cell, different mm -hmm. type of white yeah. blood cell. So different. Lymphoma is uh, lymphoma is restricted in the lympho, and I think in the in the lympho tissues. Yeah. And so, leukemia is spread out due in the blood in the bone marrow. Exactly. So that yeah. So that's the only thing that I want you know you guys to understand because a lot of time people say you know it's a cancer of white blood cell. Both of them are you know sort of the white blood cells, but the main difference between them is leukemia is more in the blood you know like it's a blood cancer versus lymphoma is more of like the limb like a cancer of the limb nodes you know. So usually you should have patient with a swollen limb nodes. Um, and you think about lymphoma. All right. So that's the only difference that I want you guys to differentiate between leukemia versus lymphoma because when you do questions, it will help you. All right. So the very first question is, what's the first difference between leukemia versus lymphoma? Like I say, cancer can affect any part of the body, right? Uh, including the blood. Uh, so leukemia and lymphoma are the both forms of the blood cancer. You can't tell the difference between them because they are a uh, different type of white blood cell, but they are it's the same, it's a blood, uh, blood cell. But the main function is that, you know, the leukemia affect blood and bone marrow. So it's sort of like thinking about like fluid, right? So blood is fluid, you know, bone marrow is also fluid. Um, so you can't, you know, you can't see it's like a, uh, like a cancer, like a tumor. Uh, but lymphomas, it tend to be affect limb nodes. Uh, so it used to be solid. So you would have like a swollen limb node. Um, so that's the, I tried to look up, uh, you know, the Vietnamese, uh, translation but I guess uh, you guys call it lymphoma and also leukemia too um, so uh, leukemia when I look up online they call it bệnh bạch cầu so I guess bạch cầu is white blood cell in Vietnamese right uh, lymphoma is more of like ung thư hạt right the hạt is a limb node uh, so it's a cancer of the limb node and then we have a different type too it's also the plasma cell dyscrasia uh, so that's more of you know, like a problem with the plasma cells. Uh, so when you break down the name of the, uh, the dyscrasia, it means that dyscrasia means it's a bad a combination of mixtures of cells. So uh, if you look at the, uh, you know, the picture on the right, to tell you exactly the difference between leukemia and lymphoma. So you see this white blood cells uh, in the blood and in the bone marrow, then it's, uh, you call it, it's kind of like, you know, leukemia. And when the, those cell, you know, it, it infiltrate in the limb node and it causes limb node to swell up and, um, you know, become like a mass and you think about like lymphomas. All right. So that's the quickest way to sort of, you know, tell the difference between the two of them. All right. So uh, the objective for today, uh, basically, uh, you know, we need to understand the normal hematoid poses uh, and then recognize the general appearance of each cell type under a peripheral blood smear. Because obviously, uh, when they test you, they're gonna give you a, P, you know, a blood smear, and then they're gonna sort of ask you, 
so if you, you they give you a pictures of the cell, you have to understand which cells uh, are you know uh, dividing uh, uncontrollably. Uh, then you know what type of cancer it is. And then there's only a certain type of leukemia. Um, so I'm gonna break it down to you know further uh, what do you need to know about each type and their associated features. But there's there are only a few of them that you have to remember. And then you just need to know the clinical presentation, diagnosis, and treatment. Uh, so step one will not ask you to differentiate, you know, what's the clinical presentation between all of them, uh, but they are present in the same, like a similar, uh, you know, presentation. And they don't talk about uh, a lot of, about diagnosis uh, and treatments, but there's certain treatments that are associated with uh, a specific type of leukemia that you have to know. Uh, so I gave you the first eight and, you know, hopefully that you guys uh, read them ahead of time so that, you know, the lecture can become a little bit more uh, meaningful for you. Um, okay, so uh, first type, uh, we talk about uh, hematoid posis, uh, and then I'm going to let uh, Kato uh, talk about this because she just went through it uh, during the first year. So I think it will be more appropriate for her to talk about it. All right, uh, Kato, you can go ahead. Okay, so hematopoiesis, we have like two lineage of the blood cell, uh, which the first one is lymphoid lineage and the second is myeloid lineage. The lymphoid lineage is um, usually only like P, B cell, T cell, and NK cell. Um, the plasma cell is a type of differentiated B cell. Already that the plasma cell, the cell that um, uh, the B cell mature that will produce antibody. So it's a type of B cell too, but usually um, in my study, my professor mentioned lymphoid, he usually say B cell, T cell, and NK cell. So um, these are usually the one in, uh, the B cell and T cell is usually the one who, who are in the lymphoid cell and NK cell. If I say anything wrong, please, please correct me, okay, no. Uh, and NK cell is uh, usually circulate in the blood. The myeloid lineage is, which you see, we think of the white blood cell, which, uh, which circulate in blood a lot, and um, and they are our innate immune system as well. I have a, it have a very important role in the innate immune system, and they you see large, multi lobe and have many granulocytes in the cytoplasm. Um, the granulocyte you see. Like uh, it usually contain like enzyme that which have uh, depend on each type of cell. It uh, contain a different enzyme which have breaking down like foreign material, um, which is a function in the innate immune system have to clear up infection. So the cell that have granulocyte is uh, basophil, eosinophil, and neutrophil, which is coming to the mnemonic is rampa paint. The mononuclear cell is this cell is they only have uh, one nucleus. So it's usually monocyte, macrophage, and then redic cell. The other cell is a uh, non granulocyte, which is the cell that doesn't have granulocyte. It is a retrocyte, which is a red blood cell, platelet, uh, platelet which derived from megakaryocyte. It's also um, the erythrocyte and platelet does not, not does not have nucleus, as we can see on the on the bottom right. And um, the megakaryocyte, just like a large nucleus cell, is a giant big cell. Is there anything you want? To... I cannot. Yeah, I mean, everything you say is right. So when I look at the, uh, you know, the peripheral blood smear, you, you try to divide them into different buckets so that you can differentiate them quickly. So when I see, uh, you know, a, a blood cell, I try to divide them either myeloid lineage or lymphoid lineage. Lymphoid is very easy. Uh, these I have like very small cell. When you look at the uh, red blood cell and you use a red blood cell as a reference. So yeah. you, any cell that is close to site of the red blood cell, you think about lymphocyte. And then you see it did a lot of, uh, they have a big nucleus and they're very small amount of, you know, the um, cytoplasm around it. Then most likely those are lymphocyte. Then you think about B cell, T cell, and then plasma cell. And then you, for the other cell that are a lot bigger and, you know, different, uh, then you look at the nucleus, you look at the granulocyte um, to see, to tell the other type of, uh, of cell. So, um, so that, that how I usually just, you know, differentiate between different types of cells. So we're gonna do practice, uh, you know, 
later uh, in order to get better at uh, telling which cell is what. Okay, mm. uh, you can go ahead with the next slide. Now, let me... Yeah. Yeah. If you look, if we look at the right. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, you want to go back? Okay, go ahead. Yeah, yeah I just want to mention sure. that if we look at the right picture, like the mm -hmm. first giant common lymphoid progenitor, we can mm -hmm. see it's a bit round cell with a large nucleus, which yeah. is um, and uh, very little cytoplas uh, cytoplasm. That's it. Uh, you see a lymphoid lineage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And... So let's talk about like why leukocyte, myeloid lineage. Mm -hmm. The first cell, uh, which is a uh, neutrophil, this is very abundant. Um, it's it's uh, populate around like 70% of the white blood cells circulate in the blood. And um, it's had like multi, multi lobe nucleus, as we can see on the picture, it have like, you see it had like three or four lobe of nucleus and it have like ranulo, uh, ranulocyte as well. And it, um, hyper segmented like which means that it's like multiple lobe of nucleus and uh function i'm not sure about like the function okay. of it in terms of like thing i just know that neutrophil have a big function in like innate um uh innate immune system which is usually like in gut um in gut like foreign material and like bacteria and just and like kill them using like the, the enzyme, like using lysosome or enzyme in the ranulocyte. Uh, I'm not really familiar with the disease associated with it. The only okay. disease I know about neutrophil is uh, mm. um, lymphocyte, at, like LAD disease, like lymphocyte adhesion disorder. Yeah, so yeah. these are more like for, you know, for the uh, problem that they're going to test you on leukemia. So it just, you know, if you don't know it, then I, will, I can talk about it a little bit later. Uh, so just yeah. talk about what you know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the second is, uh, the second uh, myeloid cell is um, eosinophil. Um, same with neutrophil, eosinophil also like mot uh, it's have bilob. Usually you can see it here, it can be trilob as well, but um, but it's one one specific feature about eosinophil is have like it's had like pinkish mm -hmm. ranulocyte. Yeah. So that's why we see it's red, that's why we see is uh, beside a bit purple nucleus, the rest were like looking pinkish. It, that's it because of the ranulocyte. And um, it's have function in as we usually see the rise of eosinophil if the patient have asthma, uh, allergic or uh, under parasite attack. So that's why, and uh, also a neoplasia. So that's a, that is the mnemonic, how to say this mnemonic, NAP? The NAP, yeah, so they call it NAP. Yeah. Um, you know, basically yeah. uh, cancer, asthma, allergic reactions, yeah. uh, adrenal insufficiency, but uh, parasite is most commonly, people think yeah. about elevated isinophil mean that uh, parasite, parasitic infections. Yes. The third one, which also the rarest one in, in the blood smear is basophil. And uh, like eosinophil, one of the uh, prominent features of, uh, of the basophil is, uh, is a dense basophilic ranulocyte, which is like the dark purple dot that we see is so, it's so dense that we almost cannot see the nucleus. Uh, and it's also by, by love. And then like the basophil had a function in, in um, allergy reaction. That's why we see the histamine at the histamine um, in the granule as well. And it's uh, mediate, the role of basophil is mediate allergic reaction by release histamine that uh, which have like vasodilate the blood vessel. Okay, Kato, uh, you might have to uh, Use your um, start screen now. My computer is, uh, is kind of frozen, so yeah, I can't control oh. the slide. Yeah. Um. So uh, while you try to do that, I'm just gonna uh, talk a little bit more about you know the granula site. So what is granula site means? So gran uh, wait a minute. Ways of um, sharing stream feature. I it's at the see. so it should be at the bottom like a panel. Uh, it will have like participant and new share. You can hit new share. Uh, but listen, I did not see that in me. Yeah, so it should have a, a panel thing. Uh, you know, it have like, 
Okay, hang on. Yeah, my computer is really slow right now. I don't know what's going on. Can you see it? You should when you log in. It should have like a um, like a panel that will show you. Oh crap! It's not good. Panel. Yeah. Uh -huh. No, it, it's not like a new share. It's like right at the middle. It's a green button. I don't have any stream button. Oh, uh, uh, share. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, share. Open it. Yeah. Sorry, guys. All right. So uh, we we can go back and talk about granola site. So granola site mean granola site mean just granules. Uh, so you have to see small granules. Uh, so the granules can be different color, right? When it's red, it's uh, you think about eosinophil, right? When it, you think it's uh, blue, then you think about basophil. But when you see a lot of dots and you you see a uh, hypersegmented, mean that you know they have a lot of nucleus. Then you think about neutrophils. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, so you see cell with a lot of dots, that means it's granular site. And the mnemonic, it just help you uh, to remember, you know, like what kind of cells are granular sites. So uh, grandma pen, uh, so we call about basophil, eosinophil, and neutrophils. All right, so we have a little bit, um, a little bit trouble off the technical difficulty. So just hang on with it. Can us. you see the screen share right now? Can you guys see the screen share? Yes, I can see it. Okay. Which, what can you see? You see my screen or her screen? Mm, I don't know. I just see... Uh, what do you see? Right? Right? Monocyte, macrophage, and then... Ah, no, I ruined it. That is my screen then. Uh, I think that's, that's my... I don't know what's going on. Hang on. All right, Kato, are you, can you uh, take over, right? Yeah, I think I'm sharing it now because I have a stop share button on me. Okay, so you stop sharing my screen and then you can start sharing your screen. Okay. Okay. I think it is my screen now. Okay. I opened the slide of monocyte. Okay. Yeah, so you can talk next about the, the other cell types where I try to figure out what's going on. Mm. Okay, so um, another cell, uh, monocyte, uh, this is the mononuclear cell. So it's only have like one nucleus. At, um, and the monocyte, as we can see, is uh, just a one giant nucleus right here. And we also see some like kind of clear spot in here, that's a vacuole, like, um, which can have like also function in like the innate immune system engulfing like foreign material. And uh, monocyte is a precursor for like macrophage, macrophage and other uh, antigen breast presenting cells that then read the cell as well. And when monocyte migrated to the tissue, it turned to macrophage and Macrophage is that's why macrophage called like tissue tissue resident cell and and its function like being defined by different tissue that is migrated to. Um, in the next slide, we will have more information about that. But the role of um, the road of monocyte of macrophage is to like phagocytosis the bacteria and um, age red blood cell and other like uh, cell depress and. It also functions in granuloma from a lecture about like, tuberculosis. So the function of granuloma is created by the macrophage because macrophage cannot clear the infection. Instead, it's warding off the infection into like a corner and prevent it to from being spread to other tissue that create the granuloma. And the last cell we have is dendritic cell. Dendritic cell, uh, its major function is to, um, is to express the MSC class and act uh, and therefore activate like T, um, uh, activate T helper cell and but and and indirectly kind of activate the adaptive immune system. And home, do you have anything you want to mm, say? No, <laughs> I can't even see my computer right now, so you have to go ahead. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh gosh. Uh, okay. Yeah. Do does anyone have any question? I guess not. Mm -hmm. 
Don't worry, I have a lot more questions when we come to the uh, okay. practice. So, as I say that the uh, function of macrophage will depend on the tissue where it's migrating to. So, um, among all of these, I only know like osteoclast, which is the bones, and the function of osteoclast is like chewing up bones and and digest bone and other um, macroclea. It's like a macrophage of the brain whose uh, function in clearing up like the environment around the nerve cell. And then read cell, as we mentioned in the last slide, it function is to like expressing the MSC2 class and by therefore activate the CD4 T cell and activate adaptive immune system. Do you know like the function of other like macrophage here? Mm, I guess you cannot see the screen then. So now we come into like the breath blood cell. The breath blood cell and platelets is also called a nucleated cell that it does not have nucleus and a retrocyte is just like a red blood cell, a fancy name for red blood cell, was uh, it derived from Latin, which is a red means red and sight means cell. Um, a red um, red blood cell is easy to see in the blood smear because, of course, it was very abundant in red uh, in the in the blood smear, and it's also uh, it also have like a very distinct structure with like by concave. This, which is the two, as we this is called by concave dish, we concave into, and uh, because it does not have any nucleus, so the energy of the red blood cell come from glycolysis, um, ninety percent in glycolysis. Uh, retic reticulocyte is a name of immature red blood cell. Uh, it does not have it does not have the shape of biconcave this yes it looks very full um something like this this would be considered somewhat at like a little bit like um a, a image a reticular side immature red blood cell because you cannot see like the the biconcave this that you can see in other cell right here as my mouth have pointed to uh bromboside platelets is the smallest and it's just a fragment of the mega karyocyte, so it does not have any nucleus and it had a function in coagulation, um, which activates in when the endothelial, uh, endothelial injury. And uh, when endothelial injury happens, it will aggregate with other platelets and other, other factors. For example, with von, Will, von Wheeler factor, fibrinogen, and um, activate the co coagulation coagulation cascade. Do we need to talk about... Want to give it a try? Nope. Oh, go back. Go back. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, it is uh, as, asinophil. So isinophil. And yeah, tell, me isinophil. How, uh, tell me how do you know it's isinophil? I, w I want to know how you think. I don't know. I don't want just the answer. I want how you think. Uh, so tell me why you think it's eosinophil. Why can it not be something else? Uh, I can see in, uh, I mean in the in the cell, it uh, has uh, the color pink, uh, pink uh, a little bit like uh, mm -hmm. orange, orange. Okay, yeah, that's a you know that's a great point. Um, so you use color, okay? So what about those little dots? What do you call those dots? Yes, it is dense. Yeah. Uh, so, so remember, we split, you know, the cell into different buckets, right? So we call it granulocyte. So tell me, what are the three cells that you see in uh, that you classify as granulocyte? Uh, I'm sorry. So there are three cells, so we call them as uh, granulocytes. Yes. So, so what are the three cells? Uh, remember uh, the mnemonics, Grandpa, Grandpa, Ben. Okay, let me, all right, uh, Kato, uh, I won't, let me share my, for, hang on. Uh, 
So yeah, vanilla site, uh, we can divide it into, uh, so we call it grandpa pen, right? So ben is B-E-N, so it stands for basophil, isinophil, and neutrophils, right? So when you see the granola site, you automatically think there's only three choices. Is it basophil, is it uh, isinophil, or is it, you know, neutrophil, right? And then you use the color of the granola site. If it's red, then you think about, you know, is it neutrophil or is it uh, isinophil, right? And then the next step is you think about, uh, you know, how many uh, nucleus does it have? Does it have like hypersegmented nucleus? Then you think about neutrophils. When you see a lot of red dots, then you think about isinophils. So, you know, you're correct. Like when you look at that cell, all you see is just red dots. So you think about isinophil, okay? So I want you guys to like answer the question, but not just the answer. I want you to derive to the answer, you know, like how do you think to the answer? Okay. All right. Let's, let's pick somebody else. Uh, let's see. Uh, Do Yin. All right. Can you tell us what others? Oh, look, I thought you got to go back. All right. So there's a right bottom corner. Yeah, that one. Can you tell me what that cell is? Just tell me how you think. You don't have to get the right answer. What do you think the cell are? All right. It's a prominent dark bubble dot okay. to the part that you cannot see. The nucleus. Has a basophilic. Okay, so let me stop sharing yours and then I'm gonna start yeah. uh, mine and then I can I want people to get the peripheral blood smear because it's very important. Yeah. It's not only helpful you for step one, but also helpful in, in real life too. Because sometimes when you do a order of peripheral blood smear and you have to wait for the pathology to read it. You can actually go down and look at under the microscope yourself. Um, so this is very important. I want people to understand it. Let's see. Okay. All right. So uh, Kato, you see this little annotate here. Um, so you can, you know, use and write things also. So it's a lot easier. Oh. All right. So, all right. So I want people to tell me where is this cell. All right. So let's see who want to raise your hand and give me a try. All right, uh, let's see uh, Huang Bo, uh, give it a try. This basal field, right? Okay, so tell me how do you get to the basal field? Yeah, because okay. it has a lot of uh, granulocyte. Okay, with, uh, great. So it's a lot of granulocyte, right? Yeah, granules. Yeah, so a lot with of granules. Color, with the color of uh, blue, so yeah. maybe is a base of food. Yeah, so exactly. So when I think of granules, I think of grandma pen, right? So base of field, isinophil, and neutrophil. And these are like, you know, really blue dots. So I think about, so blue granules. And I think about base of field, right? Okay, that's great. All right, so let me pick somebody else. Um, so I want you to tell me where are these one right here. Oh. Right, let's see uh, who want to give it a try. Uh, Rinja, you want to tell me what this cell is? Uh, yes, it is the neutrophil. Okay, how do you know it's neutrophils? Uh, um, neutrophil often has uh, uh, some. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I can go on. Um, Say in Vietnamese, it's fine. Nó có can... nhiều... Mm -hmm. nhiều vị. Nó sẽ có nhiều nhân nhỏ so và có hình mắt kính. Okay, so nucleus, right? Yeah, nucleus, yes. Yeah, and then they have this uh, U-shape, so people call it like a horseshoe. But, you know, before that, I want you to know, does it have any granules? Mm. Mm. 
Is it, a con two. Is, it, is it a granola site? Yes. Okay. Great. So it's a granola site. So it's part of the grandpa pen, right? So basophil, eosinophil, and neutrophils. There's a little bit of granules here that you can't see it, but you know, like it's right here, right here, right here. But it's not as prominent as the other one, right? So this one is a little bit harder, but usually you just look at the nucleus. Uh, the nucleus will tell you the neutrophil or not, because uh, usually it has this U shape uh, and it's you know, bilobal, so it have a lot of nucleus than the normal cells. Okay, All right, thank you. All right, so I'm gonna pick another one and then I'm gonna ask another one. All right, so let's see, I want you guys to tell me what this one is, pretty easy. Um, so I want um, Bui V. So part of this class is you, you guys have to, just have to talk. Um, it's a chance for you to talk, okay? So I want Bui V. Uh, this is a, a lymphocyte. Okay, so it's a lymphocyte. And what? How? How do you know it's a lymphocyte? Uh, as far you don't see any uh dot dot mm -hmm. in there, so it's yeah. a, a a granulocyte. And so, it's smaller. So you say it's a granulocyte or it's not a granulocyte? Not. It's not. not. Okay, it's not a granulocyte. So it's not yeah. a gramba pen, right? Okay. All right. And what else tell you that it's a, it's a lymphocyte? Uh, it's uh, only have two kinds of uh, a granulocyte. So mm -hmm. it is smaller, so you mm -hmm. can tell it's a lymphocyte. Okay. What other thing can tell you is a lymphocyte? Uh, it's a bigger nuclear. Yep. Great. So it's a huge nucleus and very small amount of uh, cytoplasm, right? So they always yeah. say it's a scan cytoplasm. So when you see the word uh, scan cytoplasm, usually it means it's a lymphocyte. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you tell it's a B cell or T cell on peripheral blood smear? Uh, I'm not sure about it. Yeah, I don't think you can. It's just a trick question. That's why they call it just lymphocyte. Yeah. We cannot really differentiate like B no. cell, T cell. On no. The so yeah, they have to use can, yeah. Yeah, blood cytometry to yep. differentiate like exactly uh, marker. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, let's pick somebody else, and we're gonna have to. I uh, mean, it's my thing is real. Okay, so let's see. What about this one? This should be fun. All right, so I'm gonna pick um um Kanlin. If you can't speak, if you can't answer in English. I want you to answer in Vietnamese. All right. Um, how about doing? Kato, can you unmute them or I, I cannot? Right? Oh, okay. Can I? Because I try to unmute them, but they. Like doing, are, are you there? I cannot unmute them for some reason. Okay, so let's say, uh, let's say the people that we can, you know, so, uh, Yong. Is Yong? Okay. All right, Hong Vo, uh, tell me what that cell is. It's a monocyte. And how do you know it's a monocyte? Yeah, it's at the nucleus like a kidney. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's a, a, little, a little bit bigger uh, than mm -hmm. the lymphocyte and don't have any okay. brand new. Yeah. yeah, I expect this one to be difficult, but uh, the way you answer it is fast. Okay. All right, so uh, what about this one? You can answer it quickly. Um, yeah, uh, I don't have just said uh, us before, it's a bad neutrophil. Okay, yeah, and does it have, what characteristic that tell you it's a neutrophil? Yeah, she Please. told us that it has a granule and the yeah. uh, nucleus don't, yeah. don't have a uh, separate lobe. Mm -hmm. 
So most of the time you just look at the shape, uh, usually they call it a horseshoe uh, shape nucleus. It's like a U uh, shape. So most of the time that usually a, is a neutrophil. So those are like characteristic, uh, okay? Yeah, great. All right, so we're gonna move on. So you're right, so the band neutrophil, and then you have lymphocyte. Uh, and I forgot to ask you about the little platelets over here. You know, it's on the slide. All right, so those are easy, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and go to the harder one, okay? Uh, let me clear the thing first. Okay, so this one, I want people to volunteer and answer. Uh, so who wanna go first? Just raise your hand. Use a raise your hand function. Okay, so Jiang Wing, uh, go ahead. Uh, try the, okay, so uh, try A. The, what is A? A. Uh, mm -hmm. um, I, uh, I, I think. Uh, oh. So easy, like this one, you have to get it. It doesn't even look like, like other cells. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Maybe it is a uh, platelet. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> what do you think? What is a fragment? Maybe, what are the cells? Are? It's a fragment of the smaller cells. Maybe it's a, a platelet. Okay, so it's platelet. Yeah, correct. Okay, so when you see the little fragments, it does it, it looks like fragments on the uh, proof of blood smear. Those are usually platelets. Okay, all right. And I, I know you want to answer B too, because you, you, you go right ahead to B. So what is a B? Yeah, I think uh, B is neutrophil. Okay, and tell me why you think it's neutrophil? Mm, because of the shape of the nuclear is... Exactly. It's like a U-shape, right? See, that's why I want you guys to drill down, you know, just remember the shape and then you get it. Okay, so B is a neutrophil. All right. Uh, let's go, uh, let's see, is it Hannah? Okay, so uh, Hongbo, you want to go for C? Let's see, it's um, lymphocyte. <coughs> see, it's lymphocyte, right? Yeah, <laughs> sorry, I just my computer is not functioning normally. Just, okay. Hang on, guys. I'm sorry. I just okay. What do you say? C was uh, C is a lymphocyte. Okay. All right. And what about D? Yeah, D is a eosinophil. Uh, it's hard to pronounce it. Uh, it's called eosinophil. Yeah. So I you uh, yeah. So you just uh, get rid of the the e part. Just call it I. So it's just eosinophil. Yeah. You can, you can call it eosinophil too, but I, people pronounce it better when you say I, just eosinophil. I pronounce eosinophil. Yeah, people can pronounce different way. Okay, all right, so let's go for this one. So I want to practice more so that, you know, when you see it, it's easier. It's just remember by, uh, so medicine is more just memorization. You practice until you get it. Okay, so, uh, we have a bunch of people here. I want to hear from them. Okay, so Do Ying, can you can you hear us or no? No? All right, how about Bui V? Okay, so Bui V, can you hear us? Uh, yes. Okay, so I want, uh, what is A? Uh, red blood cell. Okay, so B? Uh, this one is look like monocyte. Mm -hmm. And what, what characteristic tell you is a monocyte? Uh, it's a, a, a granular size and it's a, a bigger size and it's smaller uh, nuclear. Okay, so you say, is it a granular site or it's not a granular site? Could you call it a granular site? Not, not no. granular site. Okay, so, so when you say, uh, when you speak non, you have to say non granular site. Oh, okay. Yeah. So non granular site. So it's it's a bit. So sometimes you, when you speak too fast, people will you know uh, sort of think that you think you say that it's granular site. 
Yeah, and what did you sell? What other thing that you tell you that is a is a monocyte? What does it do? Uh, it, Look at the cytoplasm. It, what does it do? So they have looked like a, a smaller uh, nuclear, mm -hmm. and the cell is bigger than the uh, lymphocyte. Okay, so when it, when you see when you look at the slide, right, you see how the cytoplasm is is, is branched out uh, like that. So it looks like it's trying to eat something, right? It looks like if you want to yeah. eat something, you need the cytoplasm look like this, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So what's the difference between a monocyte and a macrophage? So I'm very interested in, like, I would have called it a macrophage, but you call it, a, you know, like people would call it a macrophage, but you call it a monocyte, which is technically is correct. But I want to know, how do you know it's a macrophage versus a monocyte? Do you know? Okay. All right. I'm going to let uh, uh, Hong Bo try to answer this. Why does she call it a monocyte, but it's not a macrophage? What's the difference uh, between the two? I think the location, this uh, peripheral blood smear, okay. so it may be uh, a lymphocyte, a monocyte. Okay. Macrophage uh, is located in the connective tissue. So, uh, is, is a monocyte and macrophage are different? Yeah, the, the monocyte is the protein, protein it's, it's, uh, uh, it's a cell that's um, going to uh, so, transform into a macrophage. Yeah, so monocyte technically is the same as macrophage. So when monocyte <laughs> mature into a macrophage, right? But yes. macrophage means that they are mature cells, so they're usually in the uh, tissue, not the... Hang on, Hannah, you got to unmute yourself. Okay, so monocyte is usually in the bloodstream. Uh, because it's immature and when it's become mature it moves to the tissue uh, so it's usually in the you know a peripheral tissue then you call it macrophage and this is a peripheral blood smear right so you have to call it monocyte so technically you can not you cannot call it macrophage do people understand that can you say it one more time i didn't okay. get it sure so macrophage means it's a mature cell mm -hmm. right so it usually is reside within the tissues so, for example, in the lung tissue, in the yeah. kidney tissue, it have a different name for each type, each type tissue. They have a different name for the macrophage. Uh, I think we have a slide that talk about that. Um, it's a uh, way a beginner slide. Okay, so like let's... Three or four slides before. Okay. Let me see. Uh, so, uh, when you have immature cells, uh, we call it as a monocyte. And since this is a peripheral plasmia, right? Then you call it a monocyte. Yeah, I, I think I got it. Okay, all right. Okay, uh, sorry, Hannah, I have to uh, keep moving you, okay? Because. Uh, because she had to disable her microphone. Okay, so uh, if it's a peripheral of blood smear, then you call it a monocyte. Uh, if it's in a tissue, then you call it macrophage. All right. Uh, so let go, so B, and then look, let go for C. Easy. All right, so uh, I'm going to go for, um, let's see who just joined us. Uh, Wing Tui? Okay, Wing Tui? You want to try C? Sorry, uh, sorry, uh, I can't uh, answer this. The, your question, mm -hmm. uh, I'm just, uh, yeah, uh, you, you just I'm joined, just born, yeah, I'm just oh. joined. okay, all right. So, I want to uh, let's see, um, all right, Hong Bo, I have to go back to you. The you as senior as one, yeah, C is a um, neutral field, okay, all right. So, go for D, what's D? Yeah, D is... Uh, Be careful, okay? Yeah, eosinophil. Okay, so it's uh, eosinophil, right? Eosinophil? It, because eosinophil. why? Why? Because look like D and C, like they look very similar.
Okay, so uh, look at this one, this red, you know, red granules, right? Yeah. Okay, so red granules mean it's an eosinophil. Okay. Eosinophil. Yeah. Now, uh, what about E? It's look like neutrophil. Mm -hmm. And what happened to the nucleus? What happens to the nucleus? I think it's hyperlobed. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, Kato, you want to help 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 them out? Hypersegmented. Okay. What does it mean? Hypersegmented. It's the nucleus like divide, like not divide more of it, become more segment. Okay. So how it's many? Like go from two to three. Okay. You see three at the most it can go. I don't know. I never yeah. see it like go to four or something like that. There's there's sometimes there can be more. So neutrophil usually is two, right? It's like. Mm -hmm. That's why they call it two. Uh, so you can, it's like two U. All right, so uh, let's go for C, D, E. What about F? All right, so Dang uh, Wing, Wing Da. F is the basal field. Hmm. And tell me yes. why. You, uh, yeah, do you know that? Uh, okay. Yeah, it has a um, big uh, nuclear and mm -hmm. the color of it is blue. Okay, so I'm going to let Kato. Uh, Kato, what do you think? I think it's a monocyte. Okay, so oh. tell, tell uh, explain to Da why, why it's not a um, oh. base of it. Yeah, so we go back, right? I know, uh, why I'm wrong. Okay, so tell me why you why you know it's wrong. Uh, yeah. you, first mm -hmm. you see, okay, so when you see, yeah, you, you see any granules? Uh, yeah, yes, J is basal field, F uh, is uh, most side because yeah. uh, oh. it is. Okay, so when you look at the thing, right, you look at the granules, I don't see a lot of granules, and plus when you see uh, basal field, you see the granules, if they call it basal granules, that's why they have the name is basal fills. Basal fill means it's basal, like uh, basophilic uh, granules. Um, so I don't see a lot of that. So it doesn't look like a basophil to me. Okay? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So no granules mean that it's not a basophil, it's not a uh, eosinophil, and it's not a neutrophil. Uh, and, and you look at that, the nucleus is huge. So that's why. Um, and then you look, you, and when you see uh, a look at this cytoplasm, the cytoplasm, it doesn't look like a normal cell. It looks like you can, it's, it's branch it out to eat other things, right? So that means that's why it's, yeah. So when you see yeah. a cell that it looks like it could, it could branch out and eat other things, then you think about like monocyte. Yes. Okay. All right. So, uh, so you, you told me J is also a basal field already. Okay. So what about I? I think I, I is motor field. A what? It's neutrophil. Yeah, exactly. So it's like an up, upside out U, right? So, okay. Yeah, what about G? Little, little thing, little guy over here. Platelets. Yeah, so very easy. You see little thing over here? They are platelets, okay? Yeah. What about H? What do you think about H? What stick out to you to H? Skin cytoplasm. Yeah, so it's a scan cytoplasm, right? So it's very thin cytoplasm and it's a huge nucleus. So it's a lymphocyte, okay? All right, so I think that's enough uh, for the cells. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and try to learn more about, um, you know, the, the main part for today. So I actually make only one slide and this is all you guys have to know for step one uh, for these. And it's very simple. Uh, so let me just try to clear all this. Okay, so how do you differentiate between different kind of leukemias? Okay, so the first thing you have to divide it into, is it lymphocyte or is it myeloid? So you have to divide as a myeloid lineage versus a lymph lympho, uh, lymphocyte. So that's why we have ALL versus COL, and then we have CML versus AML, okay? And most of these are actually divided by the age, okay? so 
first thing when you read, even you read before you read the question, you have to look at the age. It will tell you a clues how to differentiate between different type of uh, leukemia. Okay, so the first leukemia that they always test you is ALL. Uh, so it usually occurs at a very young age. So that's why I make the first one. So you just remember this, okay? So you divide it into 10, 40, 50, and then uh, 70 or 80, it doesn't matter. So at the both end, uh, you see this end, you have very young, okay? This is very young, and you think about um, AOL. When you see it's very old, like 80, 70, then you think about COL, okay? Uh, so we can talk about AOL first. So AOL is acute lymphocytic leukemia, all right? So the name will tell you a lot. So when you look at the L, uh, that means it's a lymphocyte. That basically, it means that it's a cancer of the immature lymphocyte, okay? So when you look at the peripheral plus, uh, plus smear, you expect to see a lot of lymphocyte. Uh, and then again, lymphocyte, how do you tell it's a lymphocyte? When you see there's no cytoplasm, like scan cytoplasm, right? And it's just a huge nucleus. Remember, look at this. Look at this cell over here. All you see is just a nucleus. So you think about lymphocyte, okay? So that's why... A young patients, like 10 years old, less than 10 years old, you think about acute uh, lymphocyte, so you, acute leukemia lymphocyte. And one of the characteristics that you have to remember is that it's associated with Down syndrome. Uh, and there's a mnemonic for it we call all fall down. So all children fall down, right? So all the little kids, they fall down. So all means it's AOL, okay? So fall uh, and down means it's a Down syndrome. So just remember that. All children fall down, so you think about Down syndrome associated with the uh, AOL, okay? So, and how do you tell, is it lymphocyte versus uh, neutrophil, right? So, lymphocyte versus neutrophil, uh, usually you do the, um, basically the cell surface marker. So, this one is a TDT, okay? So, what is TDT? So, basically, this is a DNA polymerase, okay? So, if it's positive, mean it's a lymphocyte. So it's a positive, it's a lymphocyte, okay, there you go. And then how did you tell between uh, different type of lymphocyte? We have, you know, T cell versus B cell, right? So you have to remember the marker of T cell. Uh, so remember HIV, uh, you have CD4, right? CD4, CD8, and then CD3. Uh, so from three, so from three to eight, then you think about T cells, okay? Anything that higher than that, like, you know, 10, 19, 20, 21, then you think about B cells, okay? All right, and then how you treat treatment. So the most um, common treatment for uh, AOL is RxC. So we have the cytarabines, uh, okay? So it's just um, cytokines, um, uh, the cytarabine kinase inhibitors, all right? So that's AOL. And then when you go to the other side, okay, this is very young. Now you go to the very old, okay? So very old, then you think about COL. Again, it's still a lymphocyte, so the TDT has to be positive, okay? All right, and the mnemonic for COL is that is we call it a crushed little lymphocyte. So when you look at the peripheral blood smear, you're not going to see the little, uh, you know, like you can see over here, like you see these are the lymphocyte, but they also have this characteristic uh, cell we call the crushed lymphocyte. It looks like somebody take a, a cell and they smash it down, so it becomes like a smudge. A smudge means like a smear, you know, like when you, uh, when you smear your ink, it becomes like a smudge. Uh, so these are characteristic of the COL. And there's usually there's no treatment for this. Uh, you can get, um, uh, you know, a, a, a bone marrow transplant, but these are people are very old already. It doesn't really help them. And most of the people, they're not going to be tolerate this, uh, uh, this bone marrow transplant. So that's why usually there's no treatment for it. Uh, so for Step one purposes, there's no treatment for COL that you have to remember. So what all you have to remember for COL is that the COL, I mean crush, little uh, lymphocyte, okay? So what they call a smudge cell. All right, now we go into the myeloid cell, okay? So this CML stands for chronic myeloid lymphocyte, and AML is stand for acute uh, myeloid lymphocyte, okay? So the M stands for myeloid. So the M stands for myeloid. Um, so a myeloid. I uh, mean that the, um, so when you do the, uh, the, you know, the cell surface markers, uh, the MPO is positive, okay? So anyone, uh, anyone know what MPO stand for? Uh, so it's down here. So it stands for uh, myeloperoxidase, uh, which is a cytoplasmic enzyme. Uh, so mostly present in neutrophils. So that's why uh, when you do the test, it will be positive for those, All right? So this one is positive for uh, lymphocyte. And let's see. 
Okay, so MPO positive means it's a uh, neutrophil. All right, so how to differentiate between CML and AML? Uh, you can look at the age. So in general, uh, people a little bit younger get CML, a little bit older get AML. So, but people can actually get uh, AML from CML. So the only, um, you know, criteria for that, if you do a peripheral blood smear and you have more than 20% of the uh, blast, then the CML can convert into an AML. So CML means chronic and AML is mean acute. So when you have acute, uh, then you have more than 20% uh, percent of the blast. Okay, so, uh, so we can go for CML first. Uh, so the only thing that you have remember for CML is a translocation. So for, uh, for, the AL, for the AOL and COL, you remember the treatment, but the CML, the AML, you have to know the translocation because these are, that's what they're gonna test you. So T, which is the translocation uh, of the 922, as very, they call it a Fluidel chromosome. Uh, so there's a little bit of mnemonic that they teach us how to remember the Philadelphia chromosome. Uh, basically, it's a, uh, transfusion, it's a fusion of the protein, which is BCR and ABL. Uh, so BCL stands for B cell receptor, uh, and ABL, which is a protein, uh, kind of like a, uh, you know, a cell cycle protein. So uh, one, that become a cancer, uh, it keep turning on. So that's why the, your cell keep turning out like all these B cell receptors. Uh, and it's, that's why they cause a uh, BCL ABR fusion. Uh, and one of the treatment for it is imatinib. Uh, so basically it's a tyrosine kinase inhibitors. Uh, and the one thing you have to know between this, uh, I forgot to mention earlier is that neutrophil. So one of the enzyme that they test for neutrophil is a LAP. Uh, so this is LAP, so they cause a leuk leukemoid reaction. So in leukemoid reaction is that uh, you have a high LAP. Uh, basically, when you have an infection, uh, your, blood, your bone marrow is going to churn out a lot of the neutrophils, okay? Uh, and, but these neutrophils are mature neutrophils, so that's why uh, these, uh, you know, this enzyme is high. They've acted, they're functional, so that's why they have high LAP. Uh, but in CML, because they are cancer, that means that they keep turning out, uh, you know, neutrophil, but these are immature neutrophils. So that means that they don't function quite yet. So even though you have a lot of neutrophil in your blood, uh, these enzymes are not functional. So that's why you have a low LAP. Okay, so you pay attention to this because they all, sometimes they always ask you a question. They give you a, a laugh value for the LAP and you have to know how the difference between a leukemia reaction versus a CML. Okay, and then AML. Same thing because a neutrophil, okay, so that's why the MPO would have to be positive, okay. And then one of the, uh, the cell, one of the type of uh, AML that you have to know, uh, which is a, which we call the M3, uh, sometimes they call it M3, but now the new name for it is called acute promyelitic uh, myelocytic leukemia, and the translocation for this one is 15 to 17, okay, so you have to remember that. Uh, translocation 9 to 22 is Philadelphia chromosome is associated with the CML. And then you have the 15 to 17 uh, associated with AML. Uh, and one of the things that you have to remember is that this cell, it called increase in risk of coagulation. Uh, so people will present with DIC, which is a complication, uh, and you, have, you try to prevent that, okay? Um, so when you have a lot of uh, cancer cell in your blood, just think about it, right? If you have a lot of blood cells and they are cancer cell and your blood become a lot thicker, right? And they tend to uh, stick to each other. So that's why you, you know, your, your blood tend to coagulate a little bit more so that you are, and you are at risk for coagulation factors. But the test of our SU is the uh, owl rot. So this is a characteristic cells. So when you see this owl rot right here, so these are the owl rot. Does anyone know what the owl rots are made of? No, I don't know. Okay, so why does the owl rot tell us that it's a uh, AML? So what is the owl rot, basically? Cathode, you know? Okay, so... I don't know what it is, but I know that whenever we see it, we mm -hmm. know definitely that the patient is okay. looking. Okay, sure. So I will tell you exactly. So MPO, remember the MPO? So basically, this owl rot is basically just the M MPO proteins that crystallize together. So this form a owl rot. Okay, so one of the treatments for um, the type three uh, uh, for AML is vitamin A. Uh, and anyone know why they use vitamin A uh, to treat for this cancer? 
So they found that there's a lot of vitamin A on the cell surface uh, of these uh, cancer cells and they give vitamin A to help promote the cell. So you know how when you use, uh, you know, you use chemotherapy to, to kill the cell, right? But the treatment for AML are actually a little bit different. They actually give vitamin A to, uh, to these cells so that help them to promote from the immature cell into a mature cell. And by become a mature cell, you actually help uh, the cell to, be, to gain function. So it's not really a cancer cell anymore. So that's how they treat it. So they're very sensitive to vitamin A, okay? So what do you need to know, all right? All you need to know is that AML, you have to know the uh, ALROP. So A stands for, you know, acute, but also just remember ALROP, okay? So it's all A, so vitamin A, ALROP, acute myeloleukemia, okay? And then remember the translocation, which is 15 to 17, because they're always gonna ask you that question. All right, so let's clear. And this is looked like a very busy uh, slide, but uh, this this have all the high U, uh, you know, information that you need to know uh, for leukemia. Okay. Um, I have a quick question. Sure. Yeah. I have a quick question. What you yeah. mean by blast? A blast. I mean, that's immature uh, neutrophils. Uh, so okay. when you think about cancer cell, you think about immature, immaturity. So they have a lot of cell, but these are not functional. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So when you think you, when you have a chronic, so that's why uh, that's why I show right here. Uh, see how it say CML is mature neutrophil. See that it's mature because it's a chronic problem. That means they have time for the cell to gain function. Okay, so when it become acute, it's become immature. When it's acute, means that they turn out a lot of cell, but these cells are not functional. So that's why they're immature. All right. So we go next. So it's it. become easier when you do the practice question. All right, so one of the other cells that they want you to get is a hairy cell leukemia, okay? This one is very easy. All you need to know is what it looks like, okay? So I want you to imprint this image in your head. Uh, let's see, this one right here. Look at, look at that, it looks, that's a hairy cell. You have to know what it looks like. So remember, remember I tell you how to tell it's a lymphocyte, right? It's, it's uh, scan cytoplasm, right? And it have a large nucleus. So it's a scan cytoplasm and large nucleus. So just remember, that's a, that's a lymphocyte. This is a lymphocyte. Okay, so see that? See all the little, um, like a cytoplasmic like intrusion? It looks like a hair. So there's like a little hair on the cell. So that's why they call it a hairy cell leukemia. Uh, and it's usually a BRAF mutation, and it's a mature, look at that, mature B-cell tumors, okay? So it's a B-cell, which is a lymphocyte, right? So you expect it to look like a lymphocyte, and it usually occur in middle age, older adult, uh, and the same clinical presentation. So all of these uh, leukemia, they all present with very similar, uh, you know, presentation. Uh, so you can have pancyto uh, pancytopenia because of bone marrow. So when you have bone marrow uh, involvement, it could cause you know, your bone marrow to not function normally. So you will have low granulocyte, meaning that you have low neutrophil, right? So that's why you are more prone to infections. And then you, uh, you have anemia because you have low uh, red blood cell, right? So low red blood cells, that's why you have uh, anemia. And when you think about thrombocytopenia, that means low platelets, right? When, what happens when you have low platelets? You're bleeding. So that's why they have gum bleeding. Uh, they can have easily bruises, okay? Uh, and then sometimes, because of these hairy cells, they get trapped in the spleen, so that's why they have splenomegaly. So this one is more specific to the hairy cell leukemia, but it could, it could happen to any other leukemia. If they have a lot of cells that get stuck in the spleen, then you have splenomegaly. All right, so the remember, uh, so diagnosis to get the uh, hairy cell leukemia, you do a peripheral blood smear, then you get the hairy cell. So it looks like filamentous hair-like projection. So these are the cells they talk about. And remember, because it's, it get trapped in the bone marrow, get trapped in the spleen. So when you do a bone marrow uh, uh, fibrosis, when you when you try to take a sample from the bone marrow, it's usually a dry tap, meaning that they they're not able to draw out the bone marrow. Uh, and again, it's a very nice mnemonic is that they also stain trapped uh, positive. So trap is a tartrate resistant acid phosphatase. Okay, so it's not like a trap, but it's a, it's a mnemonic for trap. So hairy cell leukemia, it looked like a hairy cell it get trapped in the spleen. Uh, so that's why you have splenomegaly. It get trapped in the bone marrow. That's why the bone marrow is gonna be a dry tap, but you're not gonna get, uh, you be able to get any 
bone marrow out and also it's staying positive for trap, so it's staying positive for tartrate, resistant acid phosphatase. Uh, again, you can do chemotherapy. They're not gonna test you a lot about the, uh, the treatment for these because uh, there's other things that can test for. All right, let's see. Okay, uh, so we're gonna go for the next slide. So leukemia, again, the clinical presentation is very nonspecific. So sometimes you have you know, weight loss, uh, sometimes people can just have you know, uh, fatigue. Uh, most of the time they have bone pain. If they have bone marrow involvement, you have bone pain. Uh, and then limb adenopathy. Um, most of the time when you have limb adenopathy, you think about limb node, uh, like uh, lymphoma, right? Uh, but sometimes leukemia can also cause uh, uh, you know, swelling of the limb node also. Again, hepatosplenomegaly, so involved in the spleen, it could trap in the spleen, it called uh, splenomegaly, it could trap in the liver, it called hepatosmegaly. Uh, and again, if, uh, if it crowded your bone marrow, your bone marrow is not able to produce the granulocyte, uh, specifically the uh, you know, neutrophil, then you are more uh, prone to infection. You cannot make any red blood cell, then you have uh, anemia, so uh, fatigue, weakness. And then if you cannot make uh, you know, platelets, then you are more prone to bleeding and bruising, uh, so thrombocytopenia. So for diagnosis, uh, you can do a peripheral blood smear, so important, just do a peripheral blood smear you can tell what type of blood cell are proliferating, okay? Uh, so again, uh, pay attention to the owl rod, right? So typically it's a uh, APL, the M3 uh, type of the AML. So we, you can also do a bone marrow biopsy, which is more specific. If you, if you have more than 20% blast, then you think about AML, okay? If less than 20%, then you think about CML. Uh, you can do a flow cytometry, uh, cytogenic um, karyotype, and then do molecular testing. Now, these are more advanced. But when you get the diagnosis, then you send uh, out for molecular testing to see what type of cancer they are. Uh, and then you can do also peripheral blood smear, flow cytometry. Uh, you can tell whether it's a B cell, T cell, or you know, different type of cells. Uh, and then DIC lab, mostly due to the, uh, the M3 uh, type of the uh, CML, right? Because you are at risk of uh, getting DIC. Uh, and then you can also do the other things uh, like EKG, check X-ray, or you know the echo. Uh, these are mostly because you want to start the patient on you know chemotherapy, so that's why you want to make sure that a lot of side effect of the chemotherapy it affect you know the lungs, affect the heart. So that you why you, you want to get a baseline of these uh, you know organs before you give them any chemotherapy. And sometimes you know you also do a CT hep scan too to make sure there's no tumor in the uh, in the brain also. Uh, so a lot of them, you can also do uh, chemotherapy, so intrathecal chemotherapy. Uh, if you know, they have any uh, involvement of the brain uh, you know, for AML or, or AOL, if the white blood cell is more than 100,000, um, then you think about doing flow cyto uh, uh, cytology to make sure, uh, you know, to tell what type of cells they are. Uh, these white blood cells, are these uh, T cell or B cell uh, or different type of cells. All right, so the general treatment approach. Uh, so these are just sort of like, uh, like a general language uh, for people on chemotherapy. So uh, when, you, when someone is on chemotherapy, you wanna know what uh, basically what phase they are at. Um, so this is will be really good for you, especially a third year you know, a medical student before they hit the, the board. Uh, the board you know. uh, when people talk about uh, chemotherapy, they always divide it into what phase. So the first phase, induction, re-induction, the count recovery and consolidations. Uh, so induction is usually day one. Um, the, the main point is that you want to kill all the red blood cells. I mean, not the red blood cells, kill all the cancer cells. So you give them chemotherapy so that, you know, get rid of the cancer cell. And then uh, usually you want to re-induction. Uh, so basically at day 14, they would check a bone marrow biopsy. Uh, and if there's no uh, leukemia cell or there's no cancer cell, um, then that is usually good. But you know, if there are still some uh, cancer cell, then you wanna do another round of chemotherapy to get rid of the cancer cell uh, before you progress to the next one. So when you get rid of the cancer cell, the next phase is a count recovery. So this is the phase where uh, people can actually, you know, uh, give the patient some uh, GMS to stimulate the other uh, blood cell to function. Uh, so you, this, at this phase, you start expecting the bone marrow to pro start producing the normal uh, blood cells. So you want to check their blood count every day uh, to make sure that their count are recovered nor uh, like you know nicely. And then when they become healthy enough, then people usually go into consolidations. 
that means that you give them a small dose, uh, you know, very small amount of chemotherapy to make sure that uh, the, uh, the cancer cell doesn't come back. So that's why they cause consolidations. And when none of these work, you can also do a transplant in that, you know, get a stem cell translation. Okay. All right, looks like uh, my, uh, okay. I'm sorry, Mai, but you have a older version of Zoom. So you have to, you have to update your Zoom. Okay, so we can go to next and then Mai, do you have a questions? Um, sorry. I have a question. Sure, yeah. Okay. You have an, uh, by the way, you have an older version of Zoom, so you have to update next time, okay? Okay, yeah. I have a question. Sure, yeah. So I have, uh, I, I've been to pediatrics, and uh, when the children got leukemia, mm -hmm. they also got, um, they do lumbar puncture. Mm -hmm. Well, it depends, their, right? Uh, kid. Mm. Why, why you do the lumbar puncture for? Yes, and I don't Yes, Hello? so I, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. So I saw that they have run a, um, the result runs as the, the uh, like a blood, total blood count in the lumbar puncture. Okay. But I don't understand and I asked, I don't ask the you, you don't, you don't ask your attendants? You know did, you, did you ask any doctor why? I asked, but he's just busy and he just doesn't tell <laughs> um, anything. He okay. just say that, oh, we just okay. check if they're so, so if this, getting work. Yeah, so this is why I want, uh, you know, the next generation of doctors in Vietnam to be more proactive. You know, you have to find the answer, right? So remember, look look at this slide. When you see you do an LP, why do you do an LP? You want to make sure there's no cancer cell that go into the uh, brain, up to the brain, right? How do you get the cancer cell up to the tumors, uh, to the brain, it's through the the spinal fluid. That's why they want to do it to make sure there's no, uh, you know, no cancer cell. Is that to answer your question? Oh yeah. Okay. okay. So it's just like yeah. Um, a metastasis. Yeah. So they want to make sure there's no metastasis to the brain yet, right? So you and also it can give you a, uh, give you an idea of you know what what kind of cell they are too because usually when you get the lumbar puncture you send it to cytology right and they run the cytology to tell whether it's a B cell or T cell or any sort of cancer but uh, in the end I think they want to do an LB puncture to make sure there's no metastasis to the brain yet okay all right but, you know, my my best advice to you is next time you know it doesn't matter how busy the doctor are you have to ask them. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I think they have another meaning behind it, so. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, I can, I can go look more for more, but, you know, I'm, I'm not exactly sure, uh, neither, because I, I don't work with pediatrics, but I can look yeah. up and let you guys know later also. But that's what I, 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 I think. I uh, think there's a difference in the treatment protocol with the children mm -hmm. who have um, uh, okay. uh, leukemia, if they have an... Um, uh, CN, uh, CNF metas, uh, yeah. CNF metastasis. Yeah, so that's so why you to, to, yeah. you have to do uh, an LP first. And yeah. Choose the CT protocol treatment for them. Yeah, so I think that's right. You know, so it depends on the protocol treatment, right? You want to make sure there's no CNF symptoms. Um, but yeah, okay. All right. Very good questions. Okay. All right. So I think that's the objective. It comes down to the objective. Okay. So I want you guys to understand. Uh, when you do a normal hematopoiesis, I want to, when you think about leukemia, I want you guys to divide it in two buckets, okay? So is it myeloid? Is it myeloid or is it lymphoid, okay? Uh, so with the difference between is AML versus AOL, the only difference is that, you know, the lymphoid is TDT positive and then the myeloid is MPO positive. Now remember the MPO is myeloid peroxidase, okay? Because that's very important because that will crystallize into the owl rod. And then you make sure the B cell and T cell marker. So remember T cell uh, is, you know, CD3, right? CD3, 4, and then 8, okay? So when you see small number, think about T cell. When you see big number, more than 10, then you think about B cell. These are general approach, okay? I mean, you know, if you know them, good for you. 
But you know, sometimes we, if you don't remember it, then just use this uh, general approach to tell where the B cell or T cell. And then again, when you look at the peripheral blood smear, I want you to put you put them in three different buckets. Okay. So first one is gram per pen. I mean, this these are uh, granulocyte. Okay. So if they are granulocyte, granulocyte, then you think about basophil. Um, and you think about basophil, eosinophil, and then neutrophil. All right, and then um, when you see only one nucleus, which that's why we, we call them uh, mononucleus, okay? Uh, so you think about monocytes or macrophage, if you look at different, uh, you know, other tissue, uh, like, yeah, you know, uh, skin tissue, uh, in the spleen, uh, in the lungs, okay? And then dendritic cells. Uh, when you see a cell with a large nucleus, with a lot of arms, you know, reaching out to different places, and you think about uh, a monocyte. Uh, and then we have non-granulocyte. Uh, so these cells are non-granulocyte and also non-nucleus. They don't have a nucleus, then you think about platelets, you think about erythrocytes, uh, which is a red blood cell. All right. And then, and when you look at the leukemia, try to differentiate in, into different four. So remember ALL. Uh, so at one end is ALL, which is very young children. Uh, then you think about ALL, they have Down syndrome, and you treat them with, uh, you know, um, cytorabine. And then we have COL, which is really old folks. Uh, and all you see is uh, just elevated, uh, you know, white blood cell. But usually they don't have any symptoms, uh, just elevated white blood cell. And when you do a peripheral blood smear, remember the uh, smudge cell, which is very characteristic. Uh, because they will test you that one also. All right. And then uh, look at the AML. Remember A, uh, AML. So first is M, right? So it had to be MPO positive. And it's A, you think about our rot, and then the type three, uh, which is a translocation of 15 to 17 uh, with the DIC risk uh, or you know, coagulation risk. And how you treat it with vitamin, um, uh, you know, vitamin A. Uh, and then, so remember A. So A stands for our rot, vitamin A, and then APL or M3. And then we have CML. Uh, remember CML, Philadelphia chromosome or T9. Uh, 22 translocations, uh, which basically is a fusion protein of the BCR and ABL. Uh, again, you treat it with the tyrosine uh, kinase inhibitors, we call it imatinib. Uh, and you have to remember the leukemoid reaction versus CML. So remember, leukemoid reaction is when you have an infection, uh, then your blood cell, your, your bone marrow start to produce a lot of, uh, you know, um, mature neutrophils. So that's why this LAP will be high. And in CML, uh, these, uh, they put out a lot of this uh, neutrophil, but they're sort of immature. So that's why compared to leukos, uh, leukemoid reaction, this, uh, um, this LAP uh, protein uh, or enzyme is a little bit lower, okay? And then hairy cell leukemia, remember hairy cells, okay? So get trapped in the spleen and the bone marrow. So that's why you have splenomegaly. And when you try to do a uh, tap on the bone marrow, it, be, it would be dry and also uh, positive for trap, which is a, uh, the protein. Okay, so un, you know, understand the, uh, the, you know, the name for the uh, chemotherapy. So induction, uh, basically you try to kill all the cancer cells. Reinduction is you check the bone marrow to make sure there's no more uh, you know, cancer cell left. And the, if the patient still have a little bit of the cancer cell left, you give them a second round of chemotherapy. And then uh, you wait for the count to recover. And then they go into consolidation, meaning that it's where a period where you just monitor and give them a small dose of like chemotherapy or radiation or whatever to keep the cancer cell from coming back. All right. Okay, so uh, I think that is all for, for the slide for I have. So anyone have any questions before we go and do some questions? Any questions? Everything is clear? You remember all the uh, leukemia type? Okay. All right. So let's go to the, uh, let's go to the, um, uh, the questions. Mm. Hang on. Sorry, guys. give me one second. I don't know what's going on on my computer today. Uh, Kato, you there?
Yes, I'm here. Okay, can you can you assess the uh, question slide? I don't know why my computer is frozen. I did not do anything. Mm. Where would I see it? I didn't see the same PowerPoint though. Really? Is it in different? Yeah, I would not it see. It should be in the same folder. Hey, hang on, can you give me one second. I don't know why. It's, it's just frozen. What is going on? I've never done this before. So, okay, so, all right. All right, let's see. Let me stop sharing that. Okay, all right, so let's go to the questions. All right, so let's do some questions. Uh, so it'll be more fun when you do questions. So again, this is a slide where you should imprint it in your head. So this is how they're gonna test you most of the time. All right, so we're gonna go, when we do the question, we're gonna also go back to these uh, two references, okay? Remember, AOL is very young, COL is very old. All right, so that's the objective. And then let's do the first question, okay? So let's say you have a 20 years old man has a history of profuse night sweat, fever, weight loss, and enlarged limb nodes in his neck, chest, and armpits. And the lab found that his white blood cell counts are 20,000. Result of the limb node biopsy revealed the malignant neoplasm contained a large number of cells with dark stained nuclei and little cytoplasm, as well as binucleate giant cell with eosinophilic inclusion-like nuclei. Neither collagen, thannin, or lacuna cell is present. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? Is it AOL, COL, lymphocyte-rich Hodgkin lymphoma, mixed cellularity Hodgkin lymphoma, nodularity sclerosis Hodgkin lymphoma? All right. So let's see. So let's um, vote. I want you to answer the first questions. Uh, I'll walk you through it. Uh. Tell me how, what do you think when you read these questions? Okay, when you look at the answer, right? You see leukemia think, and lymphoma, right? Yeah, I think... Uh, is it lymphoma or is it lymphoma? lymphoma? It's lymphoma. Okay, so this is lymphoma. Yeah. Okay, so we, we can cross out the AOL and the COL, right? And why do you think it's lymphoma? Uh, because the, um, the white blood cell is not increased too much. It's about twenty thousand per milliliter. Yeah, but it, you know, it's still it, you still elevate it. Yeah, it's it. Okay. And, um, and the, the result of the biopsy, the main problems come from the result of the biopsy of the lymph mm -hmm. node. Yeah, so that's the key. So the limb node, limb node biopsy, right? So if you do a limb node biopsy, which means that it's a cancer mm -hmm. of the lymph node. So you think about lymphoma. Okay, yeah. so that's why I want people to understand between the difference between lymphoma and leukemia because, you know, obviously leukemia, you can also have swollen lymph node, but people are not going to do the lymph node biopsy. They, they're usually going to do, you know, a different, do a bone marrow biopsy or, you know, a, a, a peripheral blood smear and then you do a flip, like a flow cytometry. They're not going to do a lymph node biopsy. Okay, all right, so you come down to C, D, and E. Tell me, yeah. uh, what do you think is the answer? The, the lymphoma we divided into uh, Hodgkin lymphoma and then Hodgkin mm -hmm. lymphoma. Yeah, so yeah, all yeah. these are non Hodgkin because, you know. Yeah, because. Uh, so, how, how do you tell what is what? I think it's. Uh, all right, so. Read the, okay, so read, read the description, right? So they say yeah. a malignant neoplasm contain a large number, a large number of cells, okay? With yeah. dark staining nuclei and little cytoplasm, what cell are they talking about? Uh, it's so a Okay, so it's little cytoplasm. So you think about scan cytoplasm, right? Yeah. So you think about lymphocyte. Yeah. 
and you see they're telling you they have a lot of lymphocyte, right? Yeah. And so this will be a lymphocyte rich. <laughs> exactly. So this is see sometimes like I'm telling you sometimes this question is really simple if you just break it down. All right. Yeah. So that's why I you know you can you don't have to know about these, right? You know, obviously the clue they also tell you that neither collagen. So you, if you don't have any collagen, that means you don't have any sclerosis, okay? Because yeah. you know, sclerosin means it's collagen, right? So that's why they're telling you it's not a sclerosin Hodgkin lymphoma, right? And mixed cellularity, they should tell you it should have different cell, right? But this they only tell you that it's only a large number of cell with dark stain and nuclei and little cytoplasm. That means they tell you there's a lot of lymphocyte. So that's why you pick C, lymphocyte rich Hodgkin lymphoma. All right? Yeah. See, good job You're answering the first question. It's just basically just break down the answer, the questions and, you know, just analyzing what the information that they're giving you that, you know, help you answer the questions, okay? All right, so we we'll clear all that. Great, all right, so we're gonna do, so again, what is this cell right here? This is a cell they call as a binuclear giant cell with isonophic inclusion light. So what do you call this cell? Ristenberg cell. Yeah. So the so the Ristenberg cell is that the characteristic of Hodgkin or non-Hodgkin lymphoma? Yeah, it's Hodgkin Hodgkin lymphoma. Yeah. Okay. So that's the other clue. But you know, uh, if they show you a picture of this, uh, then you think about you know uh, Hodgkin lymphoma. Um, so. Uh, they, they cause uh, our eyes because it look like an owl, like con go, you know, like hai 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 cái mắt bự hai con cú gọi là owl eye, look like an owl. Okay. All right, so first question, very easy. Uh, so you have to know the difference is that you have to know lymphocyte versus uh, lymphoma versus leukemia. Okay, uh, so look, like again, leukemia means it's a uh, cancer of the blood. So usually you have the blood or the bone marrow as a problem. And lymphoma, I mean that is usually the problem of the lymph node. And so if they do a biopsy of the lymph node, I mean, most likely they would talk about lymphoma. If they do a biopsy of the bone marrow, then you think about leukemia, okay? And, all right, so let's do question number two. So let's say a 50 years old man come to a physician, complain of abdominal fullness, fatigue and weight loss, he reports no fever, chills, or night sweat. Uh, on the examination, his abdomen is soft, non-tender, but mildly distended with enlarged spleen. There's no limb adenopathy detected. The most recent complete blood counts, uh, you know, hemoglobin is 10.5, hematocrit is 31, the white blood cell count is 32, um, yeah, not 32, 3.2 thousand, platelets count is 55,000, and the patient's peripheral blood smear is shown in the image. Uh, let me show you. What it look like? Nope. Okay, so that is a uh, picture of the peripheral blood smear. And can you tell me which of the following disease process is most likely causing uh, causing this patient problem? Is it COL, AML, follicular lymphoma, hairy cell leukemia, or mantle cell lymphoma? All right. Let's see. Yo. Uh, Hmm? All right, so uh, Nguyen Cha. All right, so tell me what do you see in that proof of blood smear? Uh, what cell is it? Okay, so let's go back before, just forget about the questions, okay? When, when I show you this proof of blood smear, what cell do you think that are? Is that a granulocyte or is not a granulocyte? Not. Not a granulocyte, okay. And look at the cells and the size of the red blood cell. Are they similar in size? Uh, I think it is a lymphocyte. Okay, so it's a lymphocyte, perfect. All right, and so compared to a normal lymphocyte, this lymphocyte is a little bit different, right? Yes. So what does it look like? Does it look like it had hair, right? It looked like it's had hair on the on this head, right? Look at that. Yeah. So what do you think they call this one is? The hair is hollow. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Hairy Just hairy. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that's all you need to remember. Just you have to know it's a lymphocyte. So all this 
This is the only thing the lymphocyte over here. And do you can you tell this is a lymphoma or not? Remember this? There's no limb adenopathy, right? There's no swollen limb node. So it cannot be a lymphoma, right? So you can cross mm -hmm. E, you can cross C, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if you have a swollen limb node, then you think about lymphoma. No swollen limb node, then no lymphoma, okay? So you come down to the you know, chronic, acute, and hairy cell leukemia. Can this be CLL? What about COL? What cell would you see on a COL? So COL? Mm, uh, we, uh, we see neutrophils. Uh, yeah, no. no. Remember C, what is L? What is L? So this is uh, chronic. Yeah, I'm sorry, in lipo, um, Chronic L, right? Chronic lymph lymphocyte, yeah, right? Lymphos. Okay, lymphocytic leukemia. Okay. Remember the mnemonic COL, uh, crush little lymphocyte? Okay, yes. so they call us a uh, smudge cell. Okay, so that's why COL. And what other thing that tell you COL? Remember the age? What's the age for COL? Um, age, very old. Remember? Older than 80. Okay, so around 70 to 80. Okay, so very old. These are very old people, right? What about AOL? AOL, what age? What age? Um, A, um, it's very young, uh, about 10 years old. Yeah, so less than 10, right? About 10 years old. So most of the time you can look at the age, it would tell you, you know, sort of give you, a, you know, an idea of what, what cancer they're talking about, okay? Yeah, yes. great. Okay, so just remember those. All right, clear. All right, so again, remember AOL, uh, the look at the lymphoblast. So remember lymphoblast. So these are look like, they look like this. Lymphocyte with no cytoplasm, right? But there's no hair on it. There's no hair. So that's why these are the lymphoblast. Remember AML, they have to have owl rot. So they have little, uh, you know, lines with them. So remember this much cell? That's COL, okay? COL, which is much cell. All right, our rot is this little crystal that uh, form within the uh, lymphocyte. Okay, so these are lymphocytes. It's called lymphoblast, and then they have this little owl rots within. And remember the hairy cell. They look like you know they look like they have hair on their head. So that's why they call hairy cell. All right, clear. All right, let's go for question number three. Um, so a six years old boy presented his pediatrician with one week of history of fever, weakness, and fatigue. Uh, so physical examination shows hepatosplenomegaly, splenomegaly, generalized lymph adenopathy, and pal conjunctiva. Uh, peripheral blood smear is shown in the image. Which of the following is process most likely causes patient's uh, problem? Okay, so let's see. Uh, Yong? Can you answer this question? Young, can you hear us? Yes. Yeah. I hear. What do you think? I think it's a, uh, okay, C. first. C, C, C. What? Okay. C, what? Uh, what makes you say C? Uh, it's a uh, young. Six year old boy. Okay. Uh, yes. <laughs> See, you get the idea. See? Yeah, you get the idea. So sometimes, you know, the age tell you exactly what's the diagnosis. Okay. So a six years old boy. So very young. So yeah. you think about yeah. right away. So very young. You think about AOL, right? But look at the images. What do they give you the images? What are these cells? So. Okay, so if I tell you that these cells have, these cells, they have scanned cytoplasm, right? And a very large nucleus. So they have scanned cytoplasm and large nucleus. So what are these? Yeah, so these are lymphocytes. Okay, and these are blast. 
they're called last because they're immature lymphocytes. All right, so this one is easy because all you need to know is the age. Yeah, so the, the right answer is uh, AOL, okay? All right. Let's see. Okay. I don't know what's going on here. Sorry, I said, I don't know what's going on with this control thing today. It just all right. So question number four, uh, we have a 29 years old uh, man complaining of spontaneous bleeding in his gums, blood, and his urine. They also have fatigue, uh, low-grade fever. Chromosomal analysis reviews balanced uh, translocation at T15 and 17. What is the most likely observed within the peripheral blood smear of this patient? Increased made of myelocyte, lymphoblast, lymphocyte with smudge cell, myofibroblast with all rot, and normal peripheral blood smear. All right, so I'm going to leave this one to uh, Jungo. Uh, I think D. D. D? Yeah. Are you sure? Uh, okay, so let's go back to our, our technique, okay? So age. This guy is 29. All right, yeah. so what can you cross out? Can it be AOL? No. No, okay. Can it, can it be COL? C, no. No, okay. So now you come down to AML versus CML, right? Yeah, right? Right? So yeah. let's, let's, let's go back and, uh, brief, you know, uh, what we remember about AML. AML3, yeah. The most... Uh... So remember the A? So A mean that is our rot, right? Yeah. Okay, it's vitamin A it's treatments, right? Yes. Okay. And what about the translocation? Yeah, T15 and 17. Okay, translocation is T15 to 17. Great. What about CML? What CML, do you need? Philadelphia okay, chromosome. Phil okay, Philadelphia chromosome. Okay. And what is the translocation? Yes, yeah, able uh, 9, 11. Nope. Oh, um, 9 11 is uh, uh, the attack. 9 22. <laughs> 9 11 is yeah. the uh, attack, not the. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, what, what is the proteins? BC, BCI, BCR, BCR, ABL. BCR. So, remember, BCR is B cell receptor, right? ABL. Okay. All right. That's all you need to remember. Okay. So, uh, lymphoblast. What is what is it talk about in lymphoblast? Uh, it's AOL. Okay, so lymphoblast is AOL. Okay, so lymphoblast means it's AOL. Okay, what about uh, lymphocyte with smudge cell? It's a CLL. Yeah, COL, right? So this one is AOL, COL. Because of the age, we already eliminate them, right? Okay, so uh, myoblast with L rod, which is AML, right? Yeah. And normal, it cannot be normal. Yeah. Right? So that's why you have. That's why the answer is D. Yeah. Okay. Well, what about this one? What did you think A is? Increase. Uh, it's, what is myocyte? So you think this is, can this be AOL or COL? What are you talking about? My, uh, um, increase. I think it's an uh, AML, right? So it could be AML, but it could solve with CML. Yeah, AML. Yeah. Well, we already have AML here already. 
So myoblast with L rods are AML, right? So this <coughs> one is they talk about CML. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, so you're right. So remember, so uh, this is how we remember is uh, Philadelphia. So remember Philadelphia cream cheese. So that's why cream cheese is CML. This is how they remember it. Philadelphia cream cheese CML. So 922, not 911, okay? It's 922. And then AML. So we have this uh, A, remember L rod, vitamin A, and then translocation 15 to 17. All right. So question number five. You can answer this one too because it's easy. So uh, seven years old boy, three weeks of history, fever, weakness. Uh, so physical exam revealed diffuse petechiae on the child's trunk and upper limb. And the peripheral blood smear show that the lymphoblasts have 30% of the cell in the bone marrow show a homogeneous uh, population of lymphoblasts. Which of the following condition predisposes the patient described about? Okay, so first tell me what, what is the uh, leukemia this patient have? Is it leukemia or lymphoma? Yes, leukemia. Okay, so what kind of leukemia? Remember, yes, leukemia sir. always a four type, right? So AOL versus uh, COL, and then we have the AML versus CML. Okay, so which which what type is it? Yeah, it's ALL because okay. the age is seven years. So. <laughs> okay, you got caught up really quick. Okay, so the, all you need to know is the age is seven, so that means it's AOL. So which one of these are predisposed to patient? It's a Down syndrome. Yeah, I think you know everyone know that by now. Okay, so uh, I think that's all I have. I'm sorry we have a lot of uh, technical difficulty today. Um, I think I will have to update my computer because we're not able to do a lot today. But you have any questions so far? Uh, is it helpful for you guys? Yeah, it's helpful. Okay. Yes, yeah, so when you when you do question for leukemia, pay attention to the age. Because sometimes with the age alone, it will tell you a lot of things, okay? So just remember really young, really old, and then in between 40 to 50, you just have the difference between the AML versus CML, okay? All right, so uh, what else do you guys want to learn next week? Uh, anyone have any uh, preference or I just pick one okay yeah. all right so any questions you guys have so far any questions no okay so uh, this is the thing that I was talking about earlier so the um, link between Down syndrome and leukemia so this guy they've been doing some research uh, so I just found this online um, so remember, risk of childhood AOL is 20 times higher in Down syndrome than the normal uh, populations. This is what they found. Okay, but no, uh, you know, um, no concrete data yet. Uh, they're still doing research on it. Okay, all right. So next week, I think about uh, you know other uh, problem that we can uh, we can learn. Uh, sorry, today was just a lot of te technical difficulty. Uh, Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, welcome, Kato, to come back. And uh, anyone have any other questions before I end the live stream? No. no? Okay. So no, I I, okay. So uh, I see you guys next one. Okay. So for next time, I actually will ask you guys a question about the previous lectures. So I will ask you quickly, just a general, like what is AML, AOL, uh, different between leukemia and uh, lymphoma so make sure you know part of learning medicine is that you keep asking the same questions and you answer the same thing it just you know become a habit and then it just you just remember the information okay yes. all right have a good night everyone thank you bye -bye. Yeah. Bye -bye. thank you yep happy new year yeah happy new year to you too